In order that uh, my words will be even clearer, I'm going to ask uh, my wife to say a few words to you also. laden skies and that little bit of rain were giving way to brilliant sunshine just about, oh, an hour before the president's scheduled arrival time at Dallas's Love Field. This was the crowd at Love Field, a particularly large greeting crowd. Uh, it was described that way by Dallas police and Mayor Earl Cavill. It's ironic that the rain stopped before the president's arrival in Dallas. Had it continued raining, a bulletproof bubble top which fits over the sleek presidential convertible would have undoubtedly been used today and possibly would have prevented the assassination. But as the sunshine broke through, President and Mrs. Kennedy arrived in Dallas to be greeted by a line of local dignitaries. A very enthusiastic crowd was on hand. Local reporters who've gathered many of these, covered many of these gatherings, called it one of the largest airport greetings in Dallas history. Mrs. Kennedy was given a bouquet of roses. Mrs. Kennedy seemed to enjoy uh, shaking hands with the local populace a bit more today than she did yesterday in San Antonio and Houston when there were times yesterday when Mrs. Kennedy appeared to be a little ill at ease. This morning she was all smiles and very warm in her greetings as was the president. Of course, the president used to such occasions. The president spent what seemed to be in a rather long time at the Dallas airport making sure that he shook hands with everyone who was on hand there. As far as the dignitaries were concerned, always taking time, of course, to introduce his wife. <clears throat> because of the rather long time spent at the airport, the president was a bit late at getting started on his motorcade through downtown Dallas. They took time out at the airport to greet an elderly lady who said she had lived 69 years without shaking hands with the president. She got her chance today. The Secret Service, all during this Texas trip, had been allowing photographers and newsmen, local press, as distinguished from the White House news contingent, to work very closely around the president and Mrs. Kennedy. The presidential couple went again to the fence railing in Dallas to greet the well-wishers. 
departing from the course marked out for them by Secret Service people, but of course, President Kennedy had made something of a reputation as a man who liked to break away and shake hands with well-wishers and the crowds who gathered to see him. These are some of the last close-up pictures taken of President Kennedy. He was literally mobbed as he and Mrs. Kennedy went to that fence railing at Love Field. The crowd at the Dallas airport was, to a large measure, a young crowd. A teenage group, which played such a prominent role in President Kennedy's 1960 campaign. Youngsters of the teen age were very much in abundance at the airport. Mrs. Kennedy carried with her the entire time at the airport the roses that had been given to her. Then the presidential couple entered the open Lincoln convertible. And Here is a bulletin from CBS News. Further details on an assassination attempt against President Kennedy in Dallas, Texas. President Kennedy was shot as he drove from Dallas Airport to downtown Dallas. Governor Connolly of Texas in the car with him was also shot. It is reported that three bullets rang out. A Secret Service man has been, was heard to shout from the car, he's dead. Whether he referred to President Kennedy or not is not yet known. The president, cradled in the arms of his wife, Mrs. Kennedy, was carried to an ambulance and the car rushed to Parkland Hospital outside Dallas. The president was taken to an emergency room in the hospital. This is Walter Cronkite in our newsroom in New York City. There has been an attempt, as perhaps you know now, on the life of President Kennedy. He was wounded in an automobile driving from Dallas Airport into downtown Dallas, along with Governor Connolly of Texas. They've been taken to Parkland Hospital there, where their condition is as yet unknown. This is Dallas's Parkland Hospital, where President Kennedy was taken after being mortally wounded. The president reportedly was alive when he reached the hospital, but he died a short time after arriving at the hospital. Some efforts were made when the presidential party first arrived at the hospital to keep pictures from being taken. The roses that Mrs. Kennedy had carried earlier were on the back seat of the automobile in which the president was shot. Now these are scenes at a building across the street from the scene where President Kennedy was shot. Police immediately ring this building. It's believed that the assassin was in that, this same building on either the fourth or fifth floor. Some entry cottages have been found in that building Witnesses said they believed three or four shots were fired. Four empty cartridges were found in the building which had been ringed by police. A number of suspects were picked up immediately. Practically anyone in the area who even gave a hint of looking suspicious was picked up. Considerable confusion in the immediate vicinity. Right there was the spot where the president was shot. This is part of the police contingent arriving to surround the building. Police thought they might be able to catch the assassin still in the building. They were unsuccessful in that. Police were heavily armed. They ringed not only the building, but about a three block area around this building, which as I say, is located directly across from where the president was shot. This is practically the spot on the street where the president was shot. These pictures were taken just after the president had been taken to a hospital. Police made a systematic search of the building. They found no weapon. Up there on the fourth or fifth floor, perhaps out of one of those open windows, is where the assassin of President Kennedy is believed to have fired the fatal shots. President Kennedy. At least six and possibly as many as one dozen arrests were made in the confusion and frantic searching that followed the shooting. 
this warehouse building is located a block from the Houston and Main intersection where the president was shot. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. Vice President Lyndon Johnson <clears throat> has left the hospital in uh, Dallas, but we do not know uh, to where he has proceeded. Uh, presumably, he will be taking the oath of office shortly and become uh, the 36th President of the United States. President Kennedy at Dallas Airport this morning uh, was cheerful and waving. It had been quite a triumphal tour of Texas over the last 48 hours. Uh, there were hundreds of people crowded around the, uh, the president uh, at the airport. There were two priests uh, in attendance, and I do, I do not know the other one's name uh, at this time. There were shocked uh, people all around, as you can see from these crowds, many of them hospital employees. Uh, quite a large crowd gathered at the hospital. Yes, uh, there was a, quite a traffic jam out there. These scenes are at Parkland Hospital That's in correct. Dallas, where President John Kennedy died. With a rather slow motorcade, so that everyone would have a chance to look, applaud, and take pictures of the President and Mrs. Kennedy. To go along Lemon Street, which is one of Dallas's main streets, then cut over to Main Street, and go down to Main Street after circling through the downtown area, out to the Trademark, where the President was due to make a speech. This is the convertible that which the President was riding when he was shot. Now this is one of the overhead walkways and railroad trestles under which the presidential car had to go. At first it was thought that the assassin's bullet might have been fired from one of those walkways or railroad trestles, but the current most popular theory is that the assassin's bullet was fired from the upper story of a building. This was the scene in downtown Dallas as the presidential motorcade went rather slowly by. As you can see, the crowd is 10, 12, and 14 lines deep. It was variously estimated that between 200 and 300,000 persons had turned out to greet President Kennedy. Down the Main Street Canyon of Dallas, President riding in an open-top convertible, he and Mrs. Kennedy frequently looking up to wave to persons who took positions in the high buildings. As you can see, the welcome was enthusiastic and warm. It was from this kind of window that the assassin's bullet is believed to have been fired. And said, Mr. President, uh, they can't make you believe now that uh, there are not some in Dallas who love you and appreciate you, can you? He said, no, they sure can't. Then, and then we had just turned the corner. We heard a shot. I turned to my left. I was sitting in the jump seat. I turned to my left to look in the back seat. The president had slumped. Now, he had said nothing. Almost simultaneously, as I turned, I was hit. And I knew I'd been hit badly. And uh, I said, I knew the president had been hit, and I said, my God, they're going to kill us all. And then there was a third shot, and the president was hit again. And we, we fought them very seriously. I had still regained consciousness, but the president had, been, had slumped in Miss Kennedy's lap. And when he was hit the second time, she said, or, or the first time, I, it, it all happened in such a brief span, she said, oh my God, they killed my husband. Yes, yes. And, uh, then after the third shot, uh, the next thing that occurred, I was conscious of the Secret Service man, of course, the chauffeur had, they had pulled out of the line. They said, uh, get out of here on the radio. They said, get us to a hospital immediately. And Ma'am? I can't sit up. <laughs> Sir? I just couldn't believe it when I heard it. We were in school. All of a sudden, we were just told the president was dead. It just it wasn't 
and seem possible. How do you feel now? Like a daze. You don't know what's going on. Why? Why did it happen? Who would have done such a thing as he questioned? Sir? This is a dark day in the history of America. This man, I think, wanted to save America. He is not dead. His spirit lives. We are sorry, deeply moved over this incident here in America. I'm sorry. I just can't believe it. I just, I feel like uh, someone in my own family is dead. Is dead. I just can't believe it. Well, it seems unreal. Like, this can't happen in our country. I, I feel the profound grief that, that's around the whole area and that, that something dreadful has happened and uncertainty about what is going to happen after this. Well, I think that we all, uh, more than with any other president, I think the people of the United States have identified themselves with the Kennedy family. And I think the grief that we all feel at this event, at this tragedy, is, is much more real and much more personal than uh, if it would have happened to, to other presidents. But of just words, just I, I just can't describe just how I feel at this time. It just seems empty. It just doesn't seem like anybody else could fill the place the way he did. President Johnson is so used to working with. The New York papers got the news into their late afternoon editions. This is a kind of headline that I don't suppose we've seen since VJ Day or VE Day. About a, the biggest type that the newspapers have brought out. It's that kind of headline that appeared when, Franklin Pres when President Franklin Roosevelt died in 1945 and when the... After a Dallas policeman was shot. The man was brought immediately to police headquarters, as were all of those arrested. That man said to have been an employee of the building from which the shot is believed to have come. Lee H. Oswald, the 24-year-old man whom Dallas police say is a prime suspect in the assassination of President Kennedy, was questioned for six hours at the Dallas police station this evening he was arrested shortly after the assassination and has been under questioning ever since. But as he was led from the interrogation room upstairs in the Dallas police station, perhaps reporters say for booking, he said to reporters, I don't know anything about this. I haven't done anything. Apparently, he is still denying any knowledge of the assassination. Oswald's arrest uh, resulted from a theater cashier's tip, Mrs. Julie Postal telephoning police from the Texas theater that a man inside looked like he was running from someone. And that was just 45 minutes after the shooting, the theater three miles away from the shooting scene. She said he kept changing seats in the theater. The police by this time were frantically searching the city for the killer, of course, and two officers raced to the theater and in through a rear door. One of them opened fire. Oswald had a snub nose, 38 pistol on him, and he shot two. It's not clear who fired first, but Officer J.D. Tippett was shot dead, and police say that Oswald's pistol killed him. Oswald, as we said, was local chairman of the pro-Castro Fair Play for Cuba Committee. He went to Russia in 1959, saying he was relinquishing his United States citizenship. He returned last year, complaining that he was disillusioned. Whether or not he ever actually did get Soviet citizenship is not clear, but he did marry while in Russia and is said to have one or two children. His wife, is in this country with him and was taken to the police station this afternoon also. Oswald worked in the building where the murder weapon, a German-made Mauser rifle, was discovered. Former Vice President Lyndon Johnson, now the President of the United States. 
returns to Washington with the body, with the remains of his former chief executive. We've been told that President Johnson can be expected to make a few brief comments before he leaves the airport. And now we can see what we believe to be a coffin containing the body of President Kennedy being moved from Air Force One onto a special enclosed ramp, a mobile ramp, which was drawn up to the back door. Yes, we can make out the casket now. A very solemn group of officials huddled down at the bottom of that ramp. Off to one side, we see Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara hastily conferring with some aides with General Maxwell Taylor. Now the ramp is being slowly lowered to the ground containing the casket. And a gray U.S. Navy ambulance has pulled into sight and is now directly in front of the ramp in which the casket still rests. There is some confusion here at the moment, which is understandable. This tragic day could not be rehearsed. We still have not seen President Johnson's wife or Mrs. Kennedy. Perhaps they are. This is a sad time for all people. We have suffered a loss that cannot be weighed. For me, it is a deep personal tragedy. I know that the world shares the sorrow that Mrs. Kennedy and her family bear. I will do my best. That is all. I can do. I ask for your help and God. A poignant note about President Kennedy's beloved son, John Jr., who he called John John. He'll be three years old on Monday, the day of his father's funeral. It's reported that the little boy walked through the White House corridors today complaining, I don't have anyone to play with. John Jr. has been quoted as saying that his father was killed by a bad man. He doesn't really understand, of course, the full significance of his father being slain. This is the basement floor of the Dallas City Hall, and that's a scuffle on the basement floor. It seems to concern for targets. He has been shot. Oswald has been shot. Lee Oswald. We're gonna Oswald has been shot. From our CBS newsroom in New York, a bulletin, Lee Harvey Oswald, the man who Dallas police say killed President Kennedy, himself is dead. He was cut down by a single bullet an hour and 15 minutes before he died in Parkland Hospital in a room just 10 feet from that room where President Kennedy died. He was being taken from the Dallas City Jail to the Dallas County Jail, but in the basement of the Dallas City Jail, before he left that building, he was shot. The man Dallas police seized at the scene and are holding has been identified as Jack Rubenstein, known in Dallas as Jack Ruby, a man who many years ago moved to Dallas from Chicago and was operating two nightclubs and well-known nightclubs in Dallas. He is 52 years old, balding with black hair. He is being held by the Dallas police who say they will charge him with the murder of Lee Harvey Oswald. Now back to Washington. At attention. And now the casket. John Fitzgerald Kennedy, 35th President of the United States, leaving the White House for the last time.
Mrs. Kennedy, Caroline, and John. Now the cortege is forming ahead of the caisson. It's a wreath of the vice president. He is accompanying it to the bear. <clears throat> president Johnson, in the utter silence here, is going to the bear with a huge wreath of, it looks to me like chrysanthemums. I know, I know it's turned away from me, I can't see it. There will be another huge wreath, I'm told from the Senate of the United States. The president is going back to stand beside Mrs. Johnson. Mrs. Jacqueline Kennedy is, and her daughter are walking up to the casket. This will be her last goodbye for today. She needs Bearing the burden of their own sorrow, a quarter of a million people braved near freezing weather to pass by the dead president in tribute. Some waited for as long as 12 hours in a line that at times stretched for 10 miles. The old, the young, the aged, the children. They became one in their grief, in the spontaneous outpouring that throws up an enduring memorial to the American spirit.